when the streets are unsafe and flooded with violence, and the police is doing nothing, it is time for the ordinary citizen to raise above the law and to take back control. Such citizens are also known as vigilantes, and they often have a particular set of skills. I have loved vigilante movies ever since I was a kid, and whenever I give my friends movie recommendations, they often say, oh no, is it another vigilante movie? And of course it is, because these movies kick ass. You killed my son. Fuck him. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, just don't mean shit to me. It does to me. In many ways, vigilante movies remind me of slasher movies, another favorite genre of mine, as both types of movies usually have completely over-the-top villains, who usually get brutally killed in the end. Also, both genres have tons of nudity and gore. In this video, I'll present to you my top 10 favorite vigilante movies, and I promise you, there will be no PG-13, laser-eyed, web-shooting, immortal, flying superheroes in this video. Number 10 is I Spit on Your Grave 3, Vengeance is Mine. I bet that you're just as surprised as me that this second sequel to a remake of an exploitation movie is on the list, but it is surprisingly good. Jennifer was gang-raped and almost killed years ago and she is still struggling with the ghosts of the past. And she feels unsafe whenever she leaves her home. Hey, girl. Why you into all fast like that, huh, girl? This is all about to change when she meets the rebellious goth Marla in her self-help group. Her pox make them stupid. It's true. I saw it in the documentary. It sucks all the blood from your brains. Like Marla is tired of talking. She wants vengeance. Yeah. I'm an old-fashioned girl with simpler tastes. <laughs> so the two girls set out to take down all the men who have perpetrated members of the group. You should know how it feels to be raped over and over again. Their attacks quickly escalate into extreme violence. So this movie is only for fans of the exploitation genre. Especially one of the kills is so brutal that it will give any guy nightmares. Number 9 is Falling Down. Michael Douglas, aka Defense, has had enough with all of the flaws of society, and being stuck in a car queue is what takes him over the edge. He sets out to enact what he perceives as justice. He starts out by fighting high prices. One soda. 12 ounces. 50 cent! Sold. Then proceeds to fighting gangs. And when he gets his hands on a Uzi, things escalate quickly. Like is it fair that fast food chains stop serving breakfast at 11.30? Defense sure thinks not. I don't want lunch. I want breakfast. Yeah, well, hey. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm really sorry too. It takes a lot of balls for a common citizen to ensure justice. What the hell are you trying to do? Kill me with a golf ball? Number 8 is Class of 84. The youth are out of control, and violence against teachers is at an all time high. At Lincoln High, the problem is so huge that alternate means of teaching have to be taken into use. So you simply can't afford to fail this class. Now what is the answer? <gasps> we follow the newly educated and naive music teacher, Andrew Norris, as he starts teaching at Lincoln High. Andy Norris, music. He believes he can make a difference, but he's in for a wake-up call, as the school is run by drug dealers and violent teacher, punks. Teacher. Wait a minute, you're in this class, sit down. Sit on this, motherfucker. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? What's the matter with matter? The school's drug and prostitution operation is run by the rich kid and piano genius Stegman. My name is Stegman. 
This manipulating bastard is probably my favorite part of the movie, with his insane and unpredictable behavior. Stegman is super intelligent and knows just how to play the system. But Mr. Norris has a few tricks up his sleeves too, and things quickly escalate into violence. And the last 10 minutes of the movie are completely wild. I like this movie so much that it pains me to jump to the next movie. Life is pain. Pain is everything. Number 7 is the Equalizer. The former Black Ops commando Robert McCall faked his own death in the hopes of settling down in a quiet life. But Robert has trouble sleeping because of all the bad things he did in his past. So he spends a lot of his nights eating at a local cafe. This is also where he makes a connection with the young prostitute Terry. No, listen, hey, come, come on, sit down. Sit, sit. When Robert sees how the Russian gangsters are destroying Terry, he attempts to buy her out of her slavery from the human traffickers. I understand it's like you're an investment. So, uh, I can give you $9,800. But when that doesn't work, he comes out of his self-imposed retirement to kick some serious ass. But McCall is in for quite a challenge as he's up against this badass. Oh, you cannot run around like a fucking wild animal. What the fuck was that? It's a message. It says, I'm here. In order to take down the hardcore Russians, the methodical McCall needs to use all of his skills, and it is a treat to watch. Is it just you, or are we waiting for someone else? I'm sorry, what? Your hands. If you really worked the power lines down there, your hands wouldn't look like that. I know we gotta be waiting for somebody else. McCall is in the same league as the A-Team and Jack Reacher, as he equals the odds when the bad guys are stepping on the little man. Number 6 is the Toxic Avenger. Did you take a look at that fucking guy? The mop boy. Can't even mop right. <laughs> This is the most controversial and insane movie you will ever watch. I guarantee it. How much is a kid on a bicycle? Troma Will is filled to the rim with drug users, maniacs, street punks, and other types of criminals. Even the city's mayor is corrupt, so what the city needs is a vigilante. At the local health club, the innocent mob boy Melvin is humiliated to such an extent that he jumps out of the window and lands in a bucket of toxic waste. He's faking it, Joey. He's faking it. Truly, this guy, if he can't take a joke, he stinks. This is also the birth of the toxic Avenger, the vigilante the city has been waiting for. My little Melvin, he must have finally reached puberty. The Avenger disarms the punks one by one in increasingly insane fashions. Kill you, motherfucker! <laughs> There's just nothing more satisfying than seeing a vigilante take down the villains like this. Don't worry, don't worry, I won't hurt you. I don't know what came over me. I just couldn't control myself. Every second of the movie is hilarious, and the movie has even gotten three sequels, a musical and a cartoon. But the uncut version of the movie is definitely not for everyone. Number 5 is Savage Streets. This is likely one of the most 80s movies you'll ever watch. Everything from the amazing soundtrack to the colorful street gangs to the amazing costume design screams 80s. I especially love how trashy yet how badass the girls in the movie are. How does this sound to you guys? How does that sound? Let's see. Almost as good as drowning in a pool of vomit. Yeah. 
So the movie is about the rebellious Brenda, who doesn't give a crap about school or gym. She only cares about her innocent and deaf-mute sister, Heather. Heather, it's beautiful. Oh god, I love you so much. When a brutal street gang of dope dealers rape her and kills one of her best friends, Brenda loses her shit and decides to take down the violent thugs one by one. Brenda is one intense woman, so the guys are in for a tough time. Brenda, don't please! He's my ass! Brenda dresses up in leather and arms herself with all of the deadliest gear from the local hunting shop. And you should do the same, so you can hunt down this movie immediately. Bend over and kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> Number 4 is Death Wish which sparked a ton of controversy when it was initially released in 1974 because of its support of vigilantism. And I can see why, because the movie is about the liberal architect Paul Kersey who lives his perfect life and believes in the best in people. My heart bleeds a little for the underprivileged, yeah. The underprivileged are beating our goddamn brains out, you know what I say? Stick them in concentration camps, that's what I say. Well, that's just until his wife is murdered and his daughter is raped by street punks, including Jeff Goldblum. This is a bit of a wake-up call for Kersey, and he starts seeing the neglects of the system. Any chance of catching these men? There's a chance, sure. Just a chance. And he starts changing his mind. What about the old American social custom of self-defense? If the police don't defend us, maybe we ought to do it ourselves. We follow him as he struggles with his thoughts of taking matters into his own hands. At first he fights back in the small. Then guns are taken into use. Finally, Kersey ends up hunting down the crooks who killed his wife one by one and giving them a bit of justice. One thing I love about the movie is how shady the underworld of New York was portrayed back then. Death Wish is one of those 70s character studies that inspired the recent Joker movie, and it is a classic. I think many expected this movie to be number one, but it has started to show its age, so it will have to do with the fourth place. The movie has four sequels that all take things to the next level, and they can also be recommended especially Death Wish 2 and 3. In my opinion, Charles Bronson is one of the most underrated action heroes of all time. Number 3 is Man on Fire. The movie takes us to the crime-ridden Mexico City, where kidnappings are happening on a daily basis. Because of this, the burned out and hard drinking ex-CIA operative John Creasy is hired as a bodyguard to protect the 9-year-old Peter Ramos. Your resume is quite impressive. 16 years of military experience, extensive counterterrorism work. I'm surprised anybody could afford you. What's the catch? A drink. Creasy slowly builds a strong relationship with the girl. She helps him refine purpose in his life, while he becomes the father figure she has been hungering for. How do you think he got out? I let him go. Better to be free, right? It's better for him. So after Peter is kidnapped with the help of the corrupt police and Creasy has regained his strength and focus, he sets out on a one-man suicide mission to take down the kidnappers and to rescue Peter. Creasy's art is death. He's about to paint his masterpiece. And nothing is going to stop him. I wish you had more time. Man on Fire is a highly underrated vengeance movie that cannot be recommended enough. Number 2 is Kick-Ass, the super bad of vigilante movies. Hey, there's a dude dressed like a superhero out there fighting a bunch of guys. Awesome. We follow the ordinary high school student and comic book fan Dave Lisinski. Oh, I want your hands all over me, Dave. Please. Oh. Who plays with the thought of becoming a superhero. 
How come nobody's ever tried to be a superhero? Well, I don't know. Probably because it's fucking impossible, dipshit. To say the least, his first venture into the profession doesn't go as planned. Not one bit. But the trip to the hospital makes him a bit more resistant to pain. So he tries again. Yes, it is. And this time things go a bit better and he even goes viral on YouTube. This video inspires both the crooks of the city as well as the real vigilantes to suit up as well. Did you see the clip? He was actually pretty good. Good at getting his ass kicked. He should call himself ass kick instead. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. It is hard not to love Hit Girl and her dad. I'm Hit Girl. And that's Big Daddy. Nicholas Cage is just amazing as Big Daddy. The movie is fun, bloody, brutal and a treat on the eyes. And it kicks some serious ass. Number one is of course Taken. The movie needs little introduction. The retired CIA agent Brian Mills is trying to reconnect with his daughter after years of neglect. But it is hard to compete with her new rich dad and her idiot mother. Kim really wants to go to Europe to learn French and experience the culture. But Brian thinks she's too young as Europe is dangerous. But he ends up giving in anyways. Three conditions. I want the address and phone number of where you're staying. Okay. If you move, I want to know where and with whom you'll be staying. Okay. You call me when you land. You okay. call me every night before you go to sleep. Okay. It's international. My number's programmed okay. in. Right after Kim arrives in Europe, she and her friend are immediately kidnapped by a prostitution ring. Luckily for Kim, her father has a particular set of skills that enables him to enact justice all by himself. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you, I will not pursue you, but if you don't, I will look for you, I will find you, and I will kill you. I love that the movie is very smart about how Brian tracks down his daughter and travels into the dark corners of Paris. And of course it is super satisfying to see all the bad guys taken down one by one with no mercy, especially this guy. If you haven't already watched it, what are you waiting for? It wasn't personal. It was all personal to me. Before I end this video, I want you all to remember that all the characters and events depicted in these motion pictures are fictional. And of course, you should not become a vigilante yourself. Thank you for watching and I will catch you later.